the Dodge Demon, the original one in 2018, was not the original idea. They were actually going to make... Today's video is brought to you by CarLock, the world's best vehicle tracker and alert system. With CarLock, you'll be able to track your car real time, get alerts of anything suspicious happening to your car, such as your car is starting when it shouldn't be starting, any vibrations. Also, if someone decides to unplug your car lock from your car, you'll get a notification for that too. You deserve that peace of mind and make sure you get your car lock. I do have a discount code for you guys shown on the screen right now. Get 10% off your purchase as well as 14 day free trial with it as well with that same discount code, man. Get your car lock, you deserve that peace of mind. Let's go ahead and get it to the video. YouTube family, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a whole another video. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time being here, uh, thank you for checking out the video. Make sure you lock in and subscribe to the channel. We do a lot of car related things. So make sure you're here for the long haul. If you already done that, thank you. But we'll not hold you too long. Let's go ahead and get into the topic of today's video. You see the title and you see the thumbnails. Well, pretty much on this channel, I don't have any kind of insight sources that work for dyes that feed me information or anything like that. Typically, if anything I say on this channel regarding Dodge or what they could be doing and things like that, it's all based on just my own research, based on just speculation, uh, which is based on what Dodge has done in the past. But for today's video, I do have some information that is kind of insider information to a certain extent uh, when it comes to the Dodge Demon. And for the Dodge Demon, the one I'm talking about is the original first Dodge Demon that kind of set up everything that's going on now. So in today's video, um, I want to talk about a quick little story um, that I learned about the original Dodge Demon. Now, we all know the SRT team, they are the team that is behind um, the higher trim, high performance cars when it comes to like the Hellcast Demon, all that type of stuff. Originally, when it came to the original demon that came out in 2018 that car was not the car they intended to make off the gate they actually got told to change what they were doing and change direction um, with that particular car so here's some background information that i learned about the original demon so if you are all familiar with dodge uh, we know that 2017 was the last year for the dodge viper they were not going to make any vipers after that and 2018 was going to be the first year for the demon now those dates are really important because this will kind of give a little bit of an idea of what Dodge was thinking about doing before they kind of changed their minds and went to make the Demon. So of course we know the SRT team, like I mentioned before, um, they were the team that helped put that pretty much design and you know gave the Demon all the features that it has on it today. And they were the ones that came up with the idea for the Demon. Now, of course, SRT team is under Dodge, so they have to answer to Dodge, Dodge board of directors, whatever, blase blase. Um, because at the end of the day, it's gonna be branded with as a Dodge vehicle, you know, it has SRT trim on it. This is the crazy thing that they were looking to do. The Dodge Demon, the original one in 2018, was not the original idea. They were actually going to make an ACR Challenger. Uh, there was actually rumors that um, the SRT team or Dodge was going to make an ACR Challenger. And to be honest, based on this story, that is true. They were going to make an ACR Challenger. Um, reason being because of the fact that the Dodge ACR was going away. They still had the Challenger uh, platform there and they want to carry the ACR name going forward. Now, the SRT team um, brought this idea to the Dodge Board of Directors and said, hey, this is what we want to do um, with this car. We want to make it an ACR. We want to make it a track focused Challenger um, because everyone was talking about how the Challenger can't turn and they wanted to make a Challenger that could perform well on the track. When I mean track, I'm talking about road courses and things like that. We're not talking about just straight line racing. When they presented this idea to Dodge, um, Dodge was like, you, you know, why do we want to make a car that can turn? How fast can it go in a straight line? So pretty much that tells you Dodge is really, um, really understands what their 
um, basis is, what their fan base is. They want high horsepower straight line cars. They do not care about turning and things of that nature. Now, here's one thing that's a little bit fuzzy when it comes to this whole thing. Um, we're not 100% sure. The guy that, that told me this information, I give a little bit more information to him. It's unsure of exactly how far they got into the design process of this ACR Challenger. But there are a few things on the Dodge Demon that kind of gives you a hint as to how far they got. Um, first and foremost, uh, we all know the Dodge Demon is a drag racing focused car. With the car being a drag racing focused car, um, number one, it does not need front fender flares. It, it really doesn't. That's just extra weight and things of that nature. It doesn't need wide front tires. Usually if you're drag racing, you're gonna, you want the smallest front tires because you don't really need to turn like that or anything of that nature. But you do need fender flares and wide tires in the front if you're doing road racing, if you're doing track racing, things that require you to turn, which is why the wide bodies that kind of took some of that technology from the Demon um, handle better than the narrow bodies because of the upgraded suspension and the wider stands and the wider tires. So based on that, we can at least say they had a look for the car and more than likely car probably had a big spoil and things of that nature and what have you. Now, going back to the person that informed me of this, now I'm in a lot of Facebook groups and things like that and typically somebody will share some information and whatnot, but this person, when we were talking about the Demon 170, he said he was actually on the tire test team um, with Goodyear. Now Goodyear, um, owns Mickey Thompson as some of you guys may be aware so he was on that team that helped develop and test the tires for the Demon and the tires on the Demon 170 are a one-off tire made specifically for that car they had to make a tire that would run well in the rain because it is a street legal tire and also have good grip at the drag strip it can do kind of both of those things and so I want to talk about that change in direction um, Dodge did the right thing by taking a car and going into drag racing for one one good reason here um, drag racing is way easier and way cheaper to get into than doing track racing now i know i got a shirt that's a track shaker it's a one-stop shop if you're trying to do a track day or things like that but drag racing is going to be much more accessible to a lot of people um i've done myself i've done a lot of runs at drag strips and things like that um but i haven't got on, got on a track and pretty much everybody else can say the same thing you can go to a drag strip maybe 10 20 dollars or whatnot or depending on how much the track is charging you go down and get as many runs as you want but a track day is a little different there you have to be close by uh, a track that has a track day and you have to pay you know a couple hundred dollars and things of that nature drag strips are usually open weekly whereas track day events don't happen as often that particular tracks usually maybe once or twice a year so for dodge to know that making a drag racing focused car will be much more marketable than making a track focused challenger it's a pretty smart move in mind but i do want to look into this uh dodge was going that direction to make an acr challenger if they were going to fully be all in on doing it what would they do to this challenger to make it the best road racing track focus challenger that they ever made one thing about dodge that we know that they do enter into partnerships with other aftermarket companies if they show that their products are solid and really work well for this mopar dodge platform now they have entered in uh, you know a couple of partnerships with speed core who makes carbon fiber car panels uh drop top customs for the convertible challenger also aad suspension so those are a couple of companies that dodge is, is working with if they were going to go with a track focus challenger they will more than likely partner with Wesley Motorsports. If you're not familiar with Wesley Motorsports, we'll put a picture of the car here. They have a Challenger that is made to hit the track. It is a Pikes Peak um, road racing Challenger. I think it's a red eye, if I'm not mistaken. You see the big spoiler on there. Um, and it is made to take turns. Now, granted, it's not going to be as agile as some of the smaller cars and stuff like that. But for a Challenger, it does hold its own. And Wesley Motorsports, they have a... Uh, a store we can get things for your Charger Challenger, uh, more so Challenger, um, that will allow your car to, whatever the parts work with both, that will allow your car to handle better and things of that nature. So here are a few things, like if Dodge went in, these are some things that I could have saw them doing to make this car a reality. So what upgrades would Dodge have given to the Challenger to make the Challenger go from a straight line machine to make it a car that can be agile on the track, that has good braking, good handling, um, all that type of stuff. First thing I think they would have done, they would have had the car come in manual only. First thing, the, the manual transmission 
is lighter than the automatic and it's a little bit cheaper as well um the viper only came in in manual so i think they would have followed suit and did it with that now the only downside to that is dodge does not have a manual transmission with their red eye engines and things of that nature they only have the manual with the 707 and the 717 hellcat engine so It'll be a pullback in power. It will also make the car lighter, which is the main thing that you need. Along with that manual transmission here, I owned a Dodge Challenger before, and I will say the manual transmission, and it's a little sloppy, so there'll be some upgrades they need to make to that particular transmission itself, and also some technology they would need to add. Um, one thing they will need to do is fix the shifting in that car. It, for a daily driver, it shifts fine, but if you're road racing, the shifting is extremely, extremely sloppy. I, I've daily driven one, it is pretty sloppy. Um, pretty much anyone that owns a Challenger that has a manual um, always changes out to a Barton shifter, which they would have probably did some upgrades to make that shifter a little bit better and things that improved on that. Um, on top of that, another thing with the Challenger here, here is um, rev matching. Um, in the car, it's hard to do the heel toe rev matching. If you're familiar with that, you gotta put your foot on the brake to stop the car and you got to downshift through the gears which you have to put your heel on the gas pedal if i got a picture over here I'll not or something i'll show you guys but it's, it's hard to do it in the challenger the pedals are way too far apart to do that and it does not have the technology to help you um do that easily um i know the camaro z01 um, has that technology to rev match automatically for you as you downshift which is probably some technology that Dodge will look in to put into this particular car to make it better than it would be without it. Another thing here is also the engine which I touched on a little bit with the manual transmission. I think they probably would have stuck with the 717 Hellcat engine. As you go into the more powerful engines you have to add a bigger supercharger which therefore adds more weight. The 717 Hellcat engine would perform as well as it needs to to do so. Another option Dodge could do is use a 392 engine. Um, it doesn't have the supercharger on it. It doesn't have the extra intercoolers that the supercharged engines have. So it does save you a little weight in that aspect as well. The next thing that they probably would have did is the brakes. They would have upgraded the brakes on the Challenger to make it perform better for track racing. Um, one thing you would need to add is stainless steel lines, which will help with keeping your brake fluid cool and not boiling over. Because if it starts boiling and get hot, you lose braking power. Um, also, instead of the six piston Brembo's that come on the car, the Viper six piston calipers actually perform better than the standard Brembo ones, and which is something they have used on the uh, Wesley Motorsports car that they have. And that gives you a better wear on your pads and things of that nature. So they probably would have put those on the car as well. On top of that, you have to keep your brakes cool, which I mentioned before. And you could do that by adding different vents and things like that to the car. Now the Viper ACR, have these type of air ducts on the car which brought cool air into the brakes to help keep them cool because once your brakes start getting hot you start losing braking powers which then impacts performance suspension would have been another upgrade they would have looked into um you know with dodge anytime they come out with a new car especially the drag racing cars uh like the demon and whatnot 1320s they always tune the suspension to work well in those situations they would have did the same here um a couple of different directions they could have went in um they could have did the adjustable coilovers which would allow you to just height as well as um, adjust how soft and hard um, the suspension is. Um, that's a manual way you can do it, or they can use the U-Connect to allow you to adjust the individual dampers at each corner and adjust them how you like, which I think would have been the way to go in this situation. Um, if you ever adjusted coilovers, um, it's not an easy process. You gotta jack, you gotta get the car jacked up, put them on a scale. You gotta do a lot of different things to do it. It's not quick, um, but if you do it through the Uconnect, um, you can go in and they can um, update it some way where you can control each individual damper on each corner of the car, which is very, very important when it comes to doing track racing. Another upgrade, uh, definitely downforce. Downforce helps um, keep the car planted on the ground, which is what the Viper is really famous for, with that big spoiler in the back and the splitter on the front and the canards. Probably would have did the same with the Challenger. I know I put some pictures up here of the Wesley Motorsports Challenger, which has those already. Um, definitely a big spoiler in the back, bigger front splitter in the canards would have helped the car uh, perform better. Now they could make it removable, but I doubt they would. So definitely the added downforce on the Challenger ACR, if they would have went that direction, would have for sure helped that car stick in the corners better and it been an easy upgrade for them to do. Now the last upgrade they would have did is definitely the tires. The tires is the only thing on the car that actually touches the road out of all the upgrades that we've talked about. Um, another thing here that they would have had, um, they definitely would have got off the Prelis. They would have probably went with the Goodyear F1 Series tire or maybe the Michelin uh, Sport Cup 2 tires as well. Those tires are preferred tires if you're doing any kind of track day event. Give you better performance all around. The Pirellis, I, I've seen people use those and those tires 
do not work well at all. And that's gonna wrap up today's video. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. What y'all think? Would y'all have liked Dodge to come out with HDR Challenger? Honestly, I think it'd have been cool for them to come out with it, but the Dodge Demon definitely did its job. It's something, like I said, drag racing is something everyone does. Um, well, not everyone does, but more people do drag racing than track day events. So Dodge understanding what their fan base is was the right move for them for sure. But I'd love to hear what you guys think. As always, thank y'all for tuning in. And if you made it to this part of the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll catch you on the next video. We're out. Cut it.